star, so the next goal is the large star, which uh, happens at, uh, I believe it's 2,000 mass. So I just have to go around and find more planets to suck in. Um, one thing that's probably more helpful is if I suck in uh, life planets as opposed to just regular small planets, because those usually have like more mass, so like this one right here is just a small planet. It, it's going to give me some mass, but it's not going to give me a lot. Um, it's usually more beneficial to find the, the life planets that are just kind of floating around and not attached to any uh, other stars yet. So in some cases, I'm just I'm going to be kind of just wandering around looking for planets to suck in. Um, situations like this are not that great because you get other ships that want to attack you. This right here is a good thing. We got a life planet here. And if, if for instance, if there is a life planet, then. Uh, it had like ships of its own. When you, uh, it when it becomes orbiting your star, the ships become attached to you. And then uh, it was probably hard to tell, but when I uh, sucked in that planet earlier, the ships that were um, green turned white. And white ships mean that they're neutral, that they're not attached to any uh, particular planet or anything. Um, the ones that I had were green, and then the uh, hostile ones were red. So that's just a good indicator there for that. Like those ones right there were neutral. Um, so now I've got 2,000 mass. I'm now a large star. Um, next goal is the neutron star, which I need to get 3,000 mass for. So um, I guess one other thing I should also point out: uh, you can I see where it says planets one of eight? Uh, as a small star, I believe I can only have four planets orbiting me at a time. Um, as a medium star, I can have six planets orbiting me, and as a um, large star can have eight planets orbiting me. Um, if I recall right, I think neutron star, it's either four or six. Um, we'll see that when I get, actually get to the neutron star stage. Uh, not sure what else I can really say right now about this. So. Um, yeah, and you can kind of see what happened with that planet there. It just kept hitting me, and I probably was losing some mass, but the planet eventually just got destroyed by uh, hitting me too many times. Because it basically lost all of its mass. What usually happens if you lose your all your mass is that you usually go back to, I think, the uh, earliest moment of that particular evolution. So, like, for instance, right now I am a star, so if I uh, um, lose my uh, enough mass to destroy me, I'm just basically going to respawn as a star again. If I had uh, got destroyed as a planet, I would have respawned as a planet again. Um, and if I got destroyed somehow as an asteroid, then I would have uh, respawned as an asteroid. So uh, right now, yeah, I'm just trying to get to the uh, neutron star stage. Um, and I shouldn't run into planets like that. Bad thing to destroy them. Um, you can kind of see, like, because I am a large star, I do have a much larger effect on gravity around things like those asteroid uh, fields than I did when I was, like, a smaller star. Um, I guess one other thing is that when you are a star and you have planets around you, you can actually uh, turn the other planets around that are orbiting you into stars as well and create multi-star uh, uh, systems. And when you do that, it actually does uh, allow you to have multiple uh, more planets. I believe the max, though, is 10 planets around any star system, regardless of how many stars are in it. And I'll, I'll show off uh, what a multi-star, a good-sized multi-star system looks like after I'm uh, done with this portion of it. Um, the ultimate goal, goal right now, really, is that I want to become a black hole and basically cause a big crunch. Which, the black hole is actually, I think, a little more exciting than this part of it, because of uh, what you have to do with that part, of it, part when you get there. I am nearly to a neutron star, though. Find another good planet here. I think that one I just got too close to it and it just the gravity pulled it in and just destroyed it. Um, it's not as detrimental if I like run into an uh, asteroid because they don't really take away too much of my uh, mass. It's m a bit more detrimental if I run into a planet and it hits me and I lose a lot more mass that way. Sometimes it can be a little hard to find uh, planets because they're just kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Um, it's not really helpful when situations like this occur, when they're already orbiting other planets, or other stars, I mean. Uh, this should be enough to get me to a neutron star. So, now, um, I forget what 
mass I need to become a black hole might be 4,000 or 5,000. Um, so it's, I believe it's actually 4,000 to become a black hole. So I yeah, just have to collect a bit more planets to do that. So try to avoid some of these other star systems around here. Um, but yeah, as you can see, when I become a neutron star, I can only have four planets orbiting me, so... If you're going for, like, a really large star system in this game, you don't want to become a neutron star in most cases. Yeah, and, and usually I think the planets, they seem to be orbiting the... or floating around by the, uh, asteroid field, so sometimes if you see an asteroid field, it's probably a good idea to look around for stars in that area. Or not stars, planets in that area. Doesn't not always a good way to find planets that way though, but it's a kind of a good indicator in some regards. Um, I do believe the neutron star does have some pretty high gravity to it. You can kind of see all those asteroids are kind of uh, really trying to get uh, close to where my star is. Yeah, and I I'd probably say that this part is not the most exciting thing in the world. Um, the Challenges are probably a bit more exciting, but they do take a lot more time to do, and some of them are actually pretty tricky. Um, but um, I mean, you can kind of see sometimes though when the planets uh, get into my orbit that um, their rotation speed kind of is affected by uh, how fast I'm going by them when they actually enter my orbit. So you kind of saw the one before the one I just got that was just orbiting like really fast around me. Uh, it does look like I'm about halfway to the black hole though, so. I I do believe it is 4,000 for the black hole. Um, there's a lot of wandering around though at this point because it's just, there's the areas are just so large and it's just, it seems like it's very hard to find the planets just floating around in nowhere. Um, I don't really have much else I can really say about this right now. I'm just, I'm just gonna wait until I get to a black hole and then we can go from there. It might be like another three or four more planets to do that. But um, when, I, when I do become a black hole, uh, one thing I have to like, be careful of is that there are going to start becoming other black holes. Um, and when that happens, then I... Uh, let's start this red uh, I don't know, I was trying to get. Uh, but one thing I do have to worry about with the black other black holes is if they're larger than me, then they can basically... Uh, just, um, they can basically destroy and I basically have to restart the black hole portion of the area. Uh, I think this next planet here should do it. So yeah, now I'm a black hole. So I'm basically, now I'm sucking basically every, almost everything in. Uh, I think the thing that's most uh, beneficial to becoming a larger black hole to start the big crunch, which I believe is at uh, 1 million mass, is uh, sucking in other black holes, which usually gives me the most uh, increase in mass. Um, what happens when I become a black hole is that, uh, for some strange reason now, there's like dark matter being created in the uh, system as well. And usually, if like any asteroids and stuff hit the hit it, uh, hit things, they'll become black holes. Um, you guys see that red indicator that was uh, briefly there to my left? That was indicating that there was a black hole over there that was larger than me. And if I continued moving in that direction, there was a high chance that the black hole would suck me in and I would have restarted this uh, portion of the uh, game here. Uh, you can see there's another one that's there in the right, so I'm going to get away from that area. There are, there are some times where it uh, does sometimes uh, have like more than one that's close by that's larger than you, and that can make things a little more tricky to get away from those uh, black holes. Um, I mean, I think after... Uh, um, what's it called after the black holes are the next best thing to suck in the probably be stars because those will give you the next highest amount of mass increase. Um, and there's another black hole I don't want to get into there. But yeah, you can see like as my mass increases, it basically also creates more of a gravity well going on, and more things get start getting sucked in. Uh, sometimes things like that happen where the stars just start oh, kind of or trying to orbit me and. The, not really succeeding too well. Kind of makes for a little funny uh, situations there. And you just got a star that just keeps orbiting you and just doesn't get sucked in. 
Um, usually, I think the star, the black holes, though, they get created when, uh, usually when dark matter starts to interacting with other parts of the uh, system, the universe that's going on in here. So usually, when you see like another black hole, it's usually kind of a good thing. And now I hit one million mass. I big crunch. So uh, time. Oh. Nobody's seeing the time. Let's go. 1654. 1654. That's not. That's not bad. Uh, I would say. I think the game has like a built-in achievement that uh, gives you one for hitting, getting from basically from this point to the big crunch in 20 minutes, I believe. So getting six uh, under that is pretty good. Um, I do have a few saved systems in here. So like for instance, I have this one, 40 stars and eight planets. Um, Kind of quite ridiculous because of uh, <laughs> how many stars are are there. They, I like they, it. They all just have like a cent, uh, one epicenter, and then the eight plants are just orbiting me. And the crazy thing is that once I spawn this particular system, now you see like other systems around there are kind of also spawning really largely. Galaxy party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I lost one of my planets. Oh well. But yeah, yeah, I, I got backups. But yeah, and one other thing you can see is like all my, all, pretty much almost all my stars have uh, shields around them. Um, that usually happens if you have, I think, uh, I think it depends on the size of the system, but I think at least like two or three uh, life plants that have shields on them will cause your stars to also get shields around them, which can be helpful for some of the other missions because some of them uh, involve actually having your stars run into other stars, so when they're, your stars are shielded, it actually does kind of help you. I yeah, see I'm losing a lot of stars here, but I don't care about that. Uh, and other things like uh, this is just a basic uh, two-star system. Uh, one thing you can kind of see is like right here, this one is kind of has this weird glow to it. That's because this particular star was created from a, I believe I had a dark matter asteroid, and it, that eventually became this star right here. And kind of same thing with this one here. Um, this is actually, I guess I lied. I got up to 18 asteroids around on one planet before. That's also a little ridiculous because it's just just the number of asteroids that are orbiting a single planet. It's, uh, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, so let me just really quick look to see here. And I, th I thought there was a key to let me see like what the orbits are, but I guess there's not. Uh, if you could, you'd probably just see like a bunch of circles around this particular planet just from all the different orbits for the, all these asteroids. I mean, n none of them are going to cross each other. They're all going to have their own separate orbit around the planet. Um, I guess I could just really quick since I'm here anyways, I might as well just show off, I guess, what this mission that's waiting for me here is. I'm not even gonna care if I run into anything. Probably not gonna... Actually, let me just suck in all, this, all these here. Just e fast, easy way to get some like, uh, mass there. But uh, yeah, so like these are the mission uh, indicators. If I go into it, this guy right here is called the uh, Entity. And, uh, yeah, he's basically telling me here that he wants me to, uh, he wants me to, basically, there's a, this star system here. It, there's life on these planets, but he wants me to take away the life from the planets without destroying the planets. So, in a case like this, what I'd be doing is I'd be doing things like that. I'd basically be running into them and making them no longer life planets, but still part of that system. If I was to do something like, uh, like this... I basically failed the mission because I all of a sudden knocked the, uh, s the planet out of its star's orbit. So those are the kind of missions it has, and uh, it's got like all basically all these missions here. And once you hit all of these missions, once you get this up to 100%, uh, that entity guy, he's, you basically get a separate uh, mission from him that he basically tells you, oh, well now I'm going to give you these god powers, but I'm too lazy to do that, so I'm just going to destroy you. And <laughs> what he does is he basically creates a... He has a black hole with four, three, planet, three stars surrounding it with a bunch of planets, and the goal is basically just knock the stars into the um, black hole, and you beat the enemy that way. Um, you also have uh, these challenges. It's basically there's different challenges for each uh, type of thing. Uh, like I think this one is uh, this one's kind of an interesting one. Is that you're gonna have a whole bunch of asteroids coming at you. Just basically have to avoid them for a while and not turn into a planet. Let's see if I don't do very well, then I'm just gonna start getting hit and eventually turn into a planet. Um, and it gives, it basically gives you a ranking based on how well you do with this. You gotta see it starts getting a little ridiculous as the time keeps going here. Like it, it just basically it wants you to become a planet. It's, 
And eventually, it eventually does happen. It's just a matter of how well can you dodge all these other asteroids coming at you. And you can see the, even the other asteroids, eventually they turn into plants as well, so... And then I lose, I lose, or I, I finish once I, that happens, so... Apparently that's not my best time ever, but whatever. Uh, I guess, guess, guess that's it though for it, so... Thank you. Just in time for breakfast. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I should probably go to bed. <laughs> You're just in time for bed. Bad bre bed and breakfast. That's what they usually call these things, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll read a fine breakfast for 4 or p.m. <laughs> huh. Apparently I have five people wanting to be my friends on uh, Steam now. <laughs> I'm giving the bike guy a volume track. Okay. Uh, All right, let's find one. This bunch. <laughs> that is lovely. All right, so this is Tales of Adventure. It's originally a Game Gear game. I'm playing it on the Sonic Gems collection for the GameCube. Um, so remember, it's a Game Gear game. It looks like crap. It sounds like ass, but it's a lot of fun to play. Um, with me is Worcester. Hey, Hicks. 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 Um, so one one quick note about this game: it's really like a Metroidvania, and then they just slapped the Sonic license on top of it. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, three, two, one. Let's jam. All right. So would you like to talk about the priority glitch? Uh, well, I mean, so for the first level, you're not gonna see, like, this is how the game was pretty much meant to be played, apart from the, oh, I guess the infinite fly might have been intentional the, as the, well. The book manual tells you you can do it. Oh, okay, well, there you go. Yeah, I never had this game as a kid, but, um, yeah, this is, it's very mundane for the first two minutes. It's how, just how the game plays. But then you pick up the remote robot, and the remote robot changes the whole game. Uh, but yeah, he was mentioning before the priority glitch. Uh, there's two different ways to activate it. Either you can activate the remote robot, uh, the frame you climb a ledge, or I think it's the frame if you start flying before you hit the ground. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not quite like the frame, like there's a little bit of wiggle room, but I don't know emulators well enough to figure out the exactctness, so I just kind of jump and it works or it doesn't work. Yeah, so there's a bit of... Uh, you know, ledge pushing he's using off the ground and in the air there, just to move him forward, just a few pixels. So there's a fair bit of optimization in this game. But yeah, like I said, um, when you do either of the priority glitches, you get into a state where you're controlling both Tails and the robot at the same time. And as you can expect from a Game Gear game, it does not handle that very well at all. And that allows you to do a fair few sequence breaks within the game. Let's see if I can actually get this. And then, no. That's really unlucky. That works most of the time. Yeah, I don't know. I so, stopped doing that because it's so random. So what was supposed to happen there is after I picked up the Chaos Emerald, which gives us 10 more life, and we can fly a little bit longer, and it's also a full heal, um, I threw a bomb while ducking, and it was supposed to destroy all three blocks. But the bombs in this game are random and kind of crappy. Um, and so it only destroyed uh, the one block. But ideally, I was supposed to just start falling right after I threw the bomb. That was a really good boss fight. Yeah, that was clean. Um, and it was just supposed to fall, and then as I was falling, I was going to start flying by holding up and hitting A, and then I just would have used like the downward momentum and catching the fly and just kind of like, oh, yeah, I got yeah. older. <laughs> um, and then I just would have like swooped out uh, to the boss area, but I just, I didn't get it, so it's, it is what it is. Oh, see, uh, there's actually two different routes that you can use. We both use two different routes. So there's one where you get the extra armor early, which gives you invincibility when you're in the ship, which you'll see later. Uh, that's the route that obviously Board's doing right now. Yeah. And there's another route you can do where you get the spark, which he just skipped, and you do some crazy stuff in Lake Rocky, which I do and die like 90% of the time. But yeah, once you get the remote robot and activate the glitch, there's two different priorities. There's the one where you're in control of both Tails and the robot, but if you then recall the robot while you're in the air, it still puts you in a different priority state where you can... Generally, it's to go up through walls, pretty much, but it does change the collision a lot. 
when you're in priority one and you're in control of her Tails and the robot, Tails can go through pretty much anything because it's taking the state of the robot, so Tails, but it still has, it still recognizes that Tails is where he's the main character. There it is, nice first go. So he changed from priority one to two so he can jump through this this, you know, mesh of wall, pretty much. Yeah, you can jump into this wall without activating the glitch, but the only thing you can do is jump upwards, and then that pushes you into, like, the out-of-bound zone between areas, and then you pretty much uh, soft-lock the game. But with the priority glitch on, like, the ceiling pushes back against Tails, and you can jump through the wall. So this is the other way of activating the glitch, is going off the ledge. The first way was the other way we mentioned. And so he stayed in priority one for a while, just because it's quicker, but now this is priority two, where... You're just climbing through stuff. And then I'm going to pick up a Chaos Emerald I normally wouldn't get. Uh, a, it's for marathon safety. And then more importantly, it's going to refill my life. Because the next trick I'm going to do, I have to impale myself on lava, which takes away like four or five life. That's four. Four. So the, like, the more life I have is the more tries I have before I have to give up and use a backup save I have. Just in case like things go horribly, horribly wrong. But it also just means I've got more life to play with at the end of the game. Oh, that was cute. That boost there right at the end. I, yeah. li I like that. Damn, I missed that. You can jump over that guy. Um, the jumping here is actually kind of finicky. Like, you can bunny hop all the slopes. And thank you for that working. Nice, that was fine. Shit. Anyone want to talk about how Sonic zips? Oh, uh... Sonic is actually a really cool item that basically gives you spin dash, but... So what he's doing now, he's trying to do a sonic zip. Nice, got the clean one there. So basically, if you lodge yourself partway into a wall, uh, more specifically with priority two, it does help a lot, but you can just lodge yourself upwards like that to go through uh, two thickness walls, where it's got, I don't know, it's pretty uh, hard to explain, but you can see the game is made up of like, you know, just really simple blocks. And so one thickness blocks you can just jump through with priority two, but sonic zips are generally how you get through two thickness. And then what happened there is I flew when Tails was off the screen, uh, and that puts him back on screen uh, for the, whatever reason. Uh, that's really cool because it lets us get back in bounds easily, and I don't kill this guy now. Um, yeah, so if you jump and fly while above the top of the screen, it puts Tails down at the bottom. As long as all of Tails' body is off the top of the screen. All right, and then this part is where the run, like, I don't do this route, but I do this trick in the 100% route. That didn't work, okay. I have to reload the area. So what was, I was supposed to do a very precise spin dash, and I didn't really want to hit myself on the level on the way out, but whatever. Um, and so uh, this, that area I was just in is a boss fight. So one of the uh, bad parts of the boss fight is you can't use the remote robot, but we need to get out of bounds so we can kind of skip a boss fight uh, and forego, like, going to, like, four other areas, and it saves like seven minutes of gameplay. Ugh, there we go. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm doing some some spin dashes to get Tails in like a, the perfect position, and then I need a very specific amount of spin dash here. So Dang. I'm choking on the audio cue here. And it's, uh, the only thing I've got is it's an audio cue, and if I miss it, I miss it. Yeah, so for whatever reason, the uh, collision that you go through off the blocks changes pretty much every single frame. So what he's doing is he's charging the spin dash for an exact amount of time so that the collision that he gets off the blocks puts him through the top of the wall. And then from that he can do a bit of a... It's sort of tricky, but feasible uh, out-of-bound stuff. All right, so hopefully this is the, this is the, the attempt. All right, and I have enough life to do it one more time. And then I've got a safety save right on the other side of the out-of-bounds region because I knew this would be the part I would completely choke at. Um, so, like, we don't, uh, this is the slower uh, any percent route. It's, like, at least 50, maybe a minute and a half slower. I have never bothered to time it. But during a 100% route, I, I do this because it saves time of going There we go, awesome. nice. Okay, we nailed it. Oh, not nailed it, but it didn't have to load a save. Um... But I do it at the 100% uh, route because it's faster than going and throwing st stuff in your inventory to fight this boss as normal. And so you get out of bounds and then you... Oh, I have to duck. Uh, and then you jump off the top of the screen, which kind of screws with the camera angle. And then you 
when you just move the camera to the left, and then the game knows where you are, but the camera is in the wrong place. I don't know. What am I doing? I need to go back. Um, and then, so the camera isn't where Tails is, so like we were saying before, you can fly to put Tails back in bounds. Well, we fly, and then it puts Tails back in bounds where the camera is. And it happens to be right above a boss fight. So you can duck uh, inside the, the out of bounds area we were, and you scroll down the screen enough such that you can, um, like when you fly, like on top of the ceiling, like tail, it push, pushes Tails inside the wall, and then you can just drop out of your fly, and you're right where the, uh, right where the extra armor is. So that saves, um, oh, what am I doing? Damn it. Uh, this area is very, very laggy. It drops a lot of input, and it doesn't help it. I'm a little bit flustered from uh, screwing up that trick a couple times, so this is about the worst movement you'd ever see in this area, and I apologize for that. But yeah, um, I think I, nice. I think that cover all that. Yeah. Oh, you know. can just get stuck in the wall there from those blocks as well. That happens a lot, and you just have to go back and restart it again. Yeah, the the current world record run does that, <laughs> and it wastes like seven seconds, and it's horrible because like it's like seven seconds went down the ra drain just because of bad. Whatever the hell, the game just didn't like you that day. Um, and one thing about switching from the robot being in control to being, Tails being in control, uh, you can jump and cancel the robot, or you can do a spin dash. Uh, but you have to wait for the robot to catch up to you, because the camera still follows the robot. And so you can go be off spin dashing, but if the robot didn't catch up to you, Tails is going to hit a wall, you're going to go nowhere, and then the game's going to lag a lot, because it doesn't like the robot being out while Tails is moving. And that one area is kind of nasty for lag. The other thing to mention is the camera moves very slow compared to Tails, and it's just following the robot at the robot speed. And when you're using Sonic, uh, obviously, you're going a lot faster than the camera. And if you're going anywhere down, if Tails touches the bottom of the screen, uh, you take a death and exit the level, which can cost a lot of time in certain places. All right, and I just want to give shout-outs to uh, one of my stream watchers, Diligent Dodo. He helped me with like the first spin dash in that area. It's, it seems really uh, obvious and trivial, but the method I was doing way before was like hella inconsistent. And he was also the person that asked me if I knew what the priority glitch was. Um, and I was like, no, what is that? And then like 20 minutes later, I was playing around with it. And then, I don't know, four hours later that night, I had a route that priority glitched the hell out of everything. And this is the second boss of the game. His name is Speedy. Um, he's a dick. He's, I mean, I think he's based on your movements, but I mean, I can't be uh, asked to keep uh, in the same position all the time, so I just kind of move around. And the idea is you avoid him as he comes down at you. And then these le little leaves on the screen right now are like wind currents. So sometimes you get really lucky wind that just pushes you straight to the top. Um, all right, that was okay. Um, so the idea is you have to just get to the top of the screen and then not get hit too many times. And I'm kind of getting hit too many times, but whatever. Yeah, all getting hit really does is just waste time. And then I ended the boss fight towards the, the end of a boss attack cycle, so when Tails crossed the ground plane, he started flying to a specific position, but if the boss is still doing an attack pattern, you can put Tails in the right position, and that saves a good chunk of time, because then, like, t like originally I used to end the fight on the right side of the screen, and then Tails would, like, fly all the way to the other place, and it wasted, like, I don't know, like 10 seconds. <sighs> um, and then for fighting that boss, he gives us a Chaos Emerald, um, and I hit the stick, that's nice. And then, in addition to that, our robot turns into a submarine. And I know nothing about Sonic Cannon, but Tails did have a submarine in the comics. I, I remember that much. Yeah, it's, it's called the Sea Fox. Sea Fox, thank yeah. you. There you go. Um, but yeah, this is now Lake Rocky. Uh, this has... It's pretty simple because he's got the extra armor, but there is still one tricky thing that he's got to do. So, before... I'm, I'm just going to cheese it. I'm gonna, oh, you're not going to do it? I'm, I'm going to do it the simple way. Like I'm just going to clear out everything, so it's, it's not as fast. Like... Oh, no, no, no. Well, yeah. I mean, still something to talk about. So basically, you're meant to get an item called the Mine so that you can destroy blocks below you. But the Proton Torpedo, which is what he's using right now, has homing. So basically, he's going to manipulate two, uh, these two enemies up here so that the Proton Torpedo homes in on one of the enemies, then misses, and then destroys blocks below him. Yeah, Worcester's got a really incredible setup for this trick that I have yet to figure out how to steal. <laughs> um, and then I didn't, re I didn't move the screen right enough to despawn the duck so he'll come back again. again. And so then we're just going to kind of wait, wait, and then we're going to shoot a missile, and it's going nice. to crash into the floor. And the reason I killed everything else at the top of the screen, you can not do that, and it's much faster, but the missile has a tendency to lock on the crap above you, and that's just no bueno, because then your missile doesn't go where you want, 
and then you end up killing the wrong duck or something. It's it's bad. And then I'm not going to put on the extra armor just yet because it causes a lot of lag, so I've got more than enough life to tank that one hit right there.